got the nice introduction already, so you know that I'm a farmer. I was a conventional farmer. I was born in Germany, if you wonder the, how the accent fits into the Alberta <laughs> landscape. Uh, I was born in Germany in 1958, and I always thought about going farming. And I was very fortunate to be uh, raised on a farm which was on very, very fertile soil. That uh, kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what is possible on the land. Oh. It's uh, too quiet, or? Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I immigrated to Canada in 1980 and I started farming in 1983 on my own. Uh, pardon me, in 1982 on my own. And I uh, always was brought up in the way that uh, early adopters of technology uh, stay ahead of the wave of uh, when their finances catch up to a farmer. So I was working on that just fine. And financially, we actually had relatively, uh, uh, it has worked relatively good for us. But in 1995, we took a training in holistic resource management. It was called at the time, now it's called holistic management. And we also, uh, we started to make decisions differently. So that is part of the way my farm is organized today. That's why we have livestock and crops. But anyway, through the years, I, uh, I did my uh, trials with GM and I uh, did actually work that fairly simple. Like one was, the technology I thought is a little bit too simple to be true. And I think today we know that is uh, absolutely true. And uh, there's grave questions about eating things like that. Um, so we, and we know that. So um, none of these things now. I'm a farmer, my farm is certified organic, and as it is today, uh, for example, uh, on the 27th of February, um, January in 2011, the American Agriculture Minister let uh, Roundup Ready Alpha Alpha be uh, allowed in the United States, and that actually it's also allowed in Canada, but it's not, uh, th there are some s little bit of hurdles, but it's basically the same. And once you have those kind of uh, GM constructs, that could completely change the way we farm because organic would be probably a thing of the past in the near future. And years ago, I did a presentation on this and I thought, okay, uh, greed is one thing when you construct uh, GM canola and GM uh, cotton, uh, soya beans and corn. But when you are dabbling with GM alpha alpha, it got to be just evil because Alpha alpha is generally not a sprayed crop, but due to the nature of GM crops, they one day will claim all GM crops, all alpha alpha crops in North America to be their seed because they will contaminate. And the way the current patent laws stand, when they contaminate me on my farm, I owe them patent royalties or a part of the profit of the crop. And the way I term that is, if uh, I had bulls on my farm and my neighbors have cows, I can let the bulls go to the neighbor's cows and if I had the patents on the semen, I can then claim the calf back from the neighbor my cow bred. That would actually be really neat for me because it is cheaper to keep a few bulls and breed a bunch of cows whose calves I then can claim. And that's essentially what has happened since we have introduced genetically modified organisms in the environment, because Monsanto now is able to claim profit from me when they contaminate me, and I didn't want it, and yet they are entitled to profit from that crop. So uh, on the 29th of March in um, 2011, there was a court case launched, we prepared through the vendor for this, and it's uh, launched by the Public Patent Foundation, which is associated to the Benjamin N. Cardoz Law School in New York, and the case was launched in the New, New York District Court, and we are trying to protect ourselves by preemptively striking a suit against Monsanto, which is valid under American law, that they cannot sue us for profits we owe them. So that's the entry. But the real uh, reason to uh, do this is actually we would like to uh, clarify the validity of their patents. And uh, the lawyer representing us is uh, Daniel Ravencher, and he is a patent attorney. He's a professor at the law school. He's also the founder of the Public Patent Foundation. And he has had some challenges in the past, but he has been successful. And um, he's our main lawyer in the case. And uh, what 
the way the American law stands is that you cannot obtain a patent if um, you cannot patent an idea, you cannot patent a patent. You cannot patent, obtain a patent to obtain a monopoly position in the marketplace. Monsanto currently holds uh, 85 to 90 percent of all genetically modified organisms in the world, and they also hold a large percentage of the corn and soya bean and canola acres in North America. And you would probably have to say that they probably do have a monopoly position in the seed business by now, and they're also viciously pursuing it by buying other seed companies to take non-GMO trades off the market, so you're almost forced into this technology. And <clears throat> you cannot p obtain, obtain a patent on an idea, you can only patent things, and you cannot obtain a patent on something which could be harmful to society i.e. poisonous. And for example, that is established in American court in 1817 already, and somebody probably tried to uh, uh, get a patent on some contraption which killed something. And so uh, that is one thing. So now, if the, ca if the law still will be upheld and, and their patents are valid, we say if they are valid, infringe, enforceable, they still don't cause any irreparable harm to Monsanto because when they contaminate us we and we don't pay them that does not that is nothing they we owe them because we are not taking anything away from them because they are not entitled to any of that but uh, the current law actually would not be like that and there have been 700 court cases no there have been 700 out of court settlements with Monsanto where they have accused somebody on patent infringement and the farmer had to settle out of court. You have to settle almost out of court with Monsanto because they will take the approach just to uh, <coughs> allocate the charge against you and then you have to defend yourself. And even so my farm may have quite a bit of equity, I never have enough equity to defend myself because they will actually just literally uh, squeeze you that you are off your farm because you can't afford it. And uh, 129 cases have been settled in court where Monsanto has accused somebody on patent infringement, and in many of those cases are cases where the pollen drifted onto the land, maybe seed or uh, swaths blew onto the land, because it is absolutely impossible, as this goes today, to obtain the issue on the field, where the contract holder is, where Monsanto has a contract on the seed. And, uh, as one part of the evidence in our case, when, we, when the case was launched, we will take any health studies is actually going there, but also the original um, um, technical use agreement you have to uh, sign with Monsanto is also part of the evidence, and 350 patents roughly are on there you have to sign when you sign the contract that you're not going to infringe on those. And you also sign that you can never take legal action against Monsanto if your GM cotton would fail. And you can, if you can do arbitration on that case. And you can never talk about the settlement on arbitration unless all parties agree. And also, you can uh, sue them only in a East St. Louis courtroom. <laughs> like it's defined, if you have an issue on other GM trades, you have to def fight it. So in our case, Monsanto has filed for for dismissal of the case on uh, frivolous, like it's frivolous. And 83 plaintiffs present actually 270,000 people, because we are also associated with other groups which uh, present. Half the um, organic farmers in North America in the United States are presented in the cost case through connections in these groups. And um, they will file for dismissal. If they don't get dismissed, they will file again for another case of dismissal. And if they get dismissed, if that death gets dismissed again, then they will go and want to have the court case moved from New York to East St. Louis. Yes. Because they know that the courts are very lenient towards them. So we just had a hearing here on the 31st of January about it. And uh, 60 plaintiffs were, on the, were out in the courtroom. And Monsanto only had lawyers to show there. And uh, outside the courtroom, there were people from the 
Occupy Food Movement, and they were doing some fake auction stuff, and I think you can look at the, some of that on YouTube now. And uh, so we are now waiting for two months to see the outcome, and if the court case is a go, it probably will take three to six years until the whole thing will have played out. So that's where we are at this point. So I guess if you have any questions here later, I'm allowed to address those. Thank you. Bravo.